It's been a while, so I thought I'd do something different. I have a bunch of footage <laughs> that I recorded maybe a month or more ago. Um, around the time that I decided to take a hiatus, which I am still technically on. I am in a period of my life where I don't really know what I'm doing and I'm trying to figure it out. But as things would have it, I am not working today, but it was not my intention to not work today. So I thought I should just edit some footage and do something with it. <laughs> so obviously there's more to that story, but that's not what this video is about. Um, so I am going to be watching and putting editing together some footage. Like I said, I recorded month a month ago, maybe more. Um, and this is me cooking. So this is some of my cooking footage. And so what this is, um, I'm going to just be watching the content and then commentating or, you know, re reacting to what I put together. And hopefully I'm going to, you know, share it with the world. <laughs> Not that anyone is asking for it, but just needed to do something with my time. Um, I will go ahead and just um, caveat that a lot of the cooking type footage that I've been, you know, trying to put together, I haven't been very successful with that. This is just what I have on hand. There's way more footage that I never even went through and I'm not going to go back and go through but it was all for this book that I was writing. Um, and the book itself, at least not getting, go into it too much, but I wanted to have this book about my food journey and I wanted to have people contribute to it, but it just didn't work out. So my part that I wrote is complete and I've decided to just kind of sit on it. I don't, see that it's something that I need to share with the world. I don't feel like the world is asking me to share it. Me writing it was very therapeutic and spiritually fulfilling for me. But anyway, so that was the original reason why I was coming up with this stuff was to kind of help, you know, help promote this book that I'm currently not trying to publish. So anyway, um, I want to let you into a little bit of what's going on with me and this um, whole cooking food thing is part of my day to day. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and start the footage and we'll go from there. Here we okay, so I am going to be trying to make some sauces today. Today is a sauce day. Um, you're not going to see everything in this. So first of all, the little tripod that I usually set up my phone with to do these kinds of recording broke. I asked my husband for another one. He was insistent that he could fix the other one. So here I am recording without one. <laughs> so that's the first thing. The second thing is, this is gonna be very chopped up because I don't have something to hold up the phone. So I'm gonna be moving it around. It's gonna be all kinds of crazy. So the next thing to point out is the fact that it is a sauce day. Um, what that means for me is most of the stuff that people go to the store to buy, like ketchup or barbecue sauce or ranch dressing or marinara sauce in a jar, like anything that you use either as a condiment or a sauce or like a base of a soup or anything like that, I have to make it myself and I am running low. So now is a day that I'm going to set aside to make sauces. So I'm going to try to bring you along for the ride. Like I said, you're not going to see everything in this one video, but this will be a good start. So let me see if I can find some place to set my phone up for a few minutes to start th this process and we'll see how it goes. All right. All right. So I think this is a good point to just kind of catch you up. So yes, at the time that I was trying to record this, I did not have my little working tripod. Um, my husband did say he could fix it. But then once he actually started to work on it, he was like, oh, baby, I can't fix this. And he he did actually 
buy me another one. So just know that he didn't like drop the ball. Um, it was just taking longer than, you know, what I was hoping. I wanted to try to, like I said, this was recorded m a month, maybe more ago. <laughs> so like I said, this is old footage, but um, he, you know, he, he, he came through in the, in the end. Um, most things he can fix. I love that about my husband, but he admitted it. He was like the way that this was broken, it would be more cost effective to just buy another one than fix it. And so I appreciate that. Just wanted to give you that update. So here we go. Okay. So for at least the next few minutes, I, <laughs> I knew that wasn't going to work. Oh my goodness. This, see, I love my husband. He is an incredible, amazing man. And when he says that he can fix something, he can. It's just that he's going to do it whenever he gets around to doing it. So hopefully the phone won't drop again anytime soon, but it probably will. And we'll just work with it. So for now, I'm just gonna start with some of the produce that I'm gonna be using to make my sauces today. So I've got, what is this? Celery. Celery is a base in like, I think everything that I'm making today is gonna have celery in it, even though celery isn't in everything, but I'm gonna be making a barbecue sauce. Well, starting to make a barbecue sauce today, a ketchup today, um a no mato or like a mock marinara i can't remember which recipe i'm following i have to pull it up one of them i use if i'm gonna do like pastas and things like that and another one i use specifically like as a dipping saucer to make pizzas with so i have to pull it up because i only have enough oh and i do want to pause <laughs> again i'm gonna be doing a lot of this that's the whole point of this video um so again in my book <laughs> That I don't know what I'm doing with yet. I do talk about the terms um, nomato sauce and mock marinara and where they come from. One of those terms is actually copyrighted. I believe it is the nomato sauce because there is like a brand out there that uses that. However, you can do like a Google search and find recipes for like nomato sauces and mock marinaras and things like that. So I do, you know, give credit where credit is due. So there is like a company that uses the brand nomato. So I try to make sure that when I'm talking about that, that I am saying that this is my version of that. That is 100% their product, their branding, things like that. But, um, it's a sauce that while it's wonderful and it serves that purpose for people who can't eat tomatoes, it doesn't serve me because there's other ingredients in it that I can't eat. So I had to make my version of it. And so that's all explained, but I just want to go ahead and state that in case anyone is watching this, this is not me saying that I'm, you know, better than them or, you know, anything like that. Um, I would love <laughs> to be able to buy their sauce and um, eat it because when you see what I'm going through to make mine, you be like, dang, girl, at least that's how I feel. So I'm no tomato, you guys keep doing your thing. So just wanted to clarify that. <laughs> Agreed, and should do one or the other, not both. So I'll figure that out. But celery is going to be in all of those. And I'm going to be making some more green sauce. So whenever I make green sauce, if you haven't heard about my green sauce, I want to pause for a moment. Um, so in the book, I do actually give my green sauce a for real legit name. And I've been telling my family to start using that name in case I ever do, like I said, put it out there for the world. So um, you're hearing me referring to it as green sauce in this video. But hopefully if I create any more videos moving forward, you'll be hearing it referred to as chutney verde. And so the reason why it's chutney verde is because I also create a chutney roja. So basically these are sauces that are like dual purpose. They have... Um, consistency that's very reminiscent to like an Indian chutney, but the ingredients in the flavor profile is more similar to like a salsa. And so I'm marrying those two things together because in all honesty, I use them for both purposes. So when I make something that is Indian inspired, I use my chutney roja or my chutney verde with that. Same thing if I make a quesadilla or something um, Tex-Mex inspired, I'm using that same sauce and it pairs really well. So anyway, long story short, <laughs> uh, green sauce is my chutney verde that you hopefully will hear about at some point in the future. If I, if I, like I said, if I make another video. Okay.
I make a lot of it. So right now I just pulled out uh, a fresh batch because I freeze it because um, I finished one. So I have green sauce to eat, but I have to keep that on hand because it goes on everything and everyone loves it. So these are, like I said, I'm going to try to make some green sauce today. Some kind of either mock marinara or tomato sauce. I'm going to be doing a barbecue sauce, a ketchup. Is there anything else? Let's just start with those four and we'll see how we do. So I've got my celery. I'm going to be processing this in just a moment, but I'm just looking at the produce that I have. This, I believe, is the chayote. And I actually have another one, but I forgot I had it. It's in the refrigerator and I'm going to try to open it up and see how it looks. But I bought this one just in case because chayote is one of those things that I'm going to be using it in my green sauce. I think that's the only thing I'm using it in for today. But I will just cut this up and eat it like a snack too. So it's really, so even the one that's in there, if it's not suitable for the sauce, it'll probably be suitable for something today. So I do have two of these. Uh, let's see. Oh, I just realized something that I forgot to get from the store. It's not a big deal. I can still make my sauce without it. This is cilantro. This is specifically for the um, green sauce. I think I might put some of this into either the barbecue sauce or the ketchup. Again, I'll have to pull up my recipe. So I can use this in two or maybe three of the sauces today, but not everything. What I meant to get for the nomato or mock, mock marinara sauce was some fresh basil. So it's one of those things where I don't have to have it just from like jarring it. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and make the sauce today. Um, whenever I get ready to serve it that day, I'll just add the fresh basil to it, which actually that's probably better in the long run. But I usually like to do like layers of flavor. So having some fresh basil go into the making of it and then fresh basil later. But either way, it's going to be good. So that's the cilantro. Um, now, this was some produce that I already had. Um, but since I knew I was going to be making my sauce today. So normally, again, if I'm looking at this, I feel like I'm going to be doing the pasta sauce today. Um, not the dipping sauce. Because um, I can make it with sweet potatoes. Um, that usually gives me the, the balance of the bitter and the sweet, but I've also made it with carrots and I feel like that's why um, I was doing that so I could use up these carrots. So normally when I make that, I, th I think it's the pasta sauce, so it's the mock marinara, I will use um, sweet potato, but today I'm going to use carrot instead. The carrots aren't as sweet as the sweet potatoes, obviously. But it's going to work for what I'm doing today because I'm going to be adding a little bit of sweetness in the form of, um, I believe, some molasses. Again, I will check my recipe. Everything will be there. But I'm pretty sure, like I said, that's why I'm doing this because I wanted to use up these carrots. I had a whole like bushel that I used for something else. These were left over. And I said that is just enough to make some pasta sauce. And um, the other big produce thing that I got today and again, I'm going to have to process all of this stuff. Like, it's all got to be, like, cleaned and sorted and whatnot are my red beets. I actually have some sugar beets in the refrigerator right now. I'm probably going to process those two while I'm at it just because I was going to make a root salad um, where I just basically, they're, they're golden beets, so they're a little bit sweeter than these. So I just roast them up, put, like, salad greens out and put that on top of it it's really good so anyway so i will be processing the red beets to make the mock marinara and i'll also process the sugar beets just to make that salad that i've been planning to make so and i'm looking at these greens and um they don't look terrible but they're not in the condition where i would keep them to eat um this one particular leaf, if you can see it, doesn't have any major problems on it, but the rest of the bushel, you, you may or may not be able to see, they have like these holes and things like that. So typically if you get beet greens that have like these holes and things in them, um, they're not going to be good for eating, which is really um, kind of sad because I eat the whole beet, like I don't waste anything. Normally I would cut all of these greens off and use them for a salad. Actually this amount 
would actually be good to saute in a pan like you would like greens and serve them as a side. So instead of having, you know, spinach with your meal, you could have beet greens with your meal. But unfortunately, like I said, these leaves don't look um, really good enough to eat in that regard. The stems, however, still look pretty good to me. So these stems, I'm going to cut these off, wash them, process them. These stems will either be cut up to add crunchiness to a salad, and sometimes I use them as noodle replacements. So later on in the week, if I decide I just want to have like some warm noodles and like some soy sauce and ginger, I've got the beet stems for that. So anyway, oh, <laughs> that's just the main um, sauce for, like I said, the these are the main ingredients for the mock marinara I'm making and also for the green sauce, but the barbecue sauce and the ketchup that I'm gonna be trying to make, they are gonna come from the blueberries and the strawberries. So again, all of this stuff has to be clean. Um, I'm gonna be soaking them in like water and vinegar. And then I have mushrooms, which are gonna go into everything except the green sauce. So there will be mushrooms in the barbecue sauce, in the ketchup, in the mock marinara, but there are no mushrooms in the green sauce. So, all right. Um, I'm going to try to process this up. I'm going to see if I can get you guys a better angle, but you might miss out on this. Not that it's that exciting, but like how I process everything. We'll see what I can do. All right. So um, I also want to just go ahead and explain that I'm not going to have recipes <laughs> for the sauces. Not that, that I don't, I, I am eventually going to share the recipes that I have with her. I'm just trying to figure out how exactly I want to go about doing that. I mean, I first of all want to find out if people even want these recipes. So if someone sees this video and they're like, yeah, I would like the recipe, then that might be an indicator to me. But like right now, I feel like these are just things that I'm sharing for my own benefit. Like I've had this experience and I'm putting it out there. I don't necessarily feel like I need to subject people to like my thoughts and ideas. I'm just sharing them for my own benefit. I know that sounds crazy, but what I mean is um, in the book that I wrote that I'm not currently trying to publish, a lot of these recipes were in that book. It's not a cookbook. It's actually a memoir, but I have all of these recipes that I have developed to address my um, current health conditions. And so anyway, you're going to see me going through the process of creating these sauces. So obviously you'll see like the ingredients and things like that. But the point of this video is to just show that this is the kind of stuff that I do on a weekly basis. And so this is where my day to day might be a little different from the average. And I think that that's really what I'm just trying to convey here. So this isn't meant to be a follow along tutorial cooking video kind of thing. You know, if I feel like that's something that people want, I would be more than happy to create that down the road. But for now, I'm just kind of sharing the experience of having this very kind of restricted diet that I have. And so um, I'm not going to go into too much more there, but just so there's clarification, the restrictions that I have are that I have an acid sensitivity, I have a fat sensitivity, um, acid fat, um, sugar, I'm not diabetic or anything like that but I do have to like watch like my sugar intake. And so that acid sensitivity means that there are certain ingredients that are problematic for me, like tomatoes, onion, garlic, peppers, um, also a nightshade sensitivity. So if you know what any of that stuff is great, and if you don't, don't worry about it, but that's why I'm creating these alternative um, recipes and things like that. So let's again, get into it. <laughs> Okay, we're going to try this angle and see what it does. I don't know if you guys are catching this, but I think you are. So I'm just going to fill this bowl with some water. And to that, I've got some white vinegar. I'm just going to take a cap full. Add that to it. And I'm going to start by trying to rinse the blueberries. Let's get a little bit, a little bit more water in there. Okay, I need 
to get this container open. Let's see if this will. There we go. Okay. So I'm just going to drop my little right in there. Okay. I'm just going to. Oh, I lost one. There we go. Just kind of swoosh these around. Rinsing them pretty well. Keep losing them, but they're, that's okay. And so, it's important to run your fingers through it just because if there are like any little pieces that are stuck on it, um, we want them to get that off. And it's going to do like a settle, sediment kind of thing where all the stuff should be going into the bottom of the bowl. And you should be left with fairly clean blueberries. Oh yeah, and you can, I don't know if you can see how dirty that is, but yeah, I'm just going to rinse these a little bit longer, we'll swish them around a little bit longer, and I'm going to go ahead and put them back in their plastic container because I'm going to use these like right now, so um, if I was going to be storing this in my refrigerator, I'd probably get like a fresh little Tupperware like um, container, um, I, I have these things I think they're called like grid, grip lock or something. Anyway, I would line it with a paper towel and store it like that. But I'm going to go ahead and use these now, so I don't need to store them. Okay. I'm just going to put this back into the little container it was. This container does have holes in it, so the water can continue to like drain out of it until I'm ready to use it in just a few minutes. I'm going to set this aside. Um, I'm going to, again, I'm going to lay out some paper towels just to absorb the water. I don't want my counter to get soaking wet. So here we go. Set this aside. There we go. So I'm going to try to do the same thing with the strawberries, but um, I think I think I can use this water because there's still like, plenty of room. I may have to do this in two batches.
I do have like actual kitchen shears, but I don't feel like looking for them. And I do have like this one like pair of scissors that we just use for like random things in the kitchen. Um, and they do get cleaned like along with like um, other like knives and utensils and things like that. So I'm just gonna use these little scissors that are not kitchen shears to cut off the um, rough stems. Um, the stem of cilantro is edible, but some of the stuff like at the very bottom is just too rough and tumble, like it's just root, so you don't wanna necessarily eat that. So I'm gonna cut that off. Let me see. I can see some more that needs to be cut off here. Yeah. Just cut some of that off. A little bit more. Okay. And then that would be cleaned with like knives and stuff like that. I'm gonna put it right here for now. I'll throw this out. And actually, these stems, um, since they've been rinsed, I'm gonna put these in my stock pot. So I make my own broth and stock. So I'm actually gonna put this in there. Um, I usually keep it frozen until I'm ready to use it. The one that I have now is full, so I'm just gonna start another one. But yeah, these are gonna go in my stock pot. This is gonna be great in my stock. Okay, so here we go. One last little bye-bye rinse before I get ready to spin this. When I spin it, that will help break up some more stuff as well. So, but it's already been soaked in the water and water. So that was, for me was like the main cleanser of this. So let's put this in here. Let's put on the lid. Let's spin it. That's what it looks like spinning. <laughs> and this is how you um, should be hopefully cleaning your salads, like your lettuce and things like that. You know, you are rinsing them well, washing them, whatever, and then spinning them to get that excess moisture off of them. That's what causes your lettuces to wilt so quickly when you have a lot of excess moisture on them. So if you are cleaning your lettuce, which I hope you are, um, you are then um, spinning it to get the excess moisture off. That's just going to give it a longer shelf life for you. I'm gonna spin this a little bit more. All right, that is pretty good. So. Like I said, I'm gonna be using this. Um, I can pull out some of the pieces I can tell didn't make it through the process. And that's, again, part of why you do this because you can pick out the pieces. They stick to the sides the most that aren't gonna be good to use. So I'm gonna just pick the ones that are just stuck to the sides out. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna be using this in, I think, all of the sauces today. I think I'm doing the green sauce, yep. I'm gonna be using this in all of the sauces today. So, all right, there we go. Okay, so I'm getting ready to show you some progress that I've made. I've finished processing everything and I'm in getting ready to start um, cooking some of the vegetables. I have some different stations. Um, so I'm gonna be showing you the different stations real quick. Okay, so. This is the first station. So again, blueberries for the barbecue sauce, strawberries for the ketchup. As you can see, I have two different, three different piles of celery here. One pile is for each of the ketchup and the um, barbecue sauce. Another pile is for the green sauce. These are things that are gonna go into the cook um, raw. So I have a mixture of different things that I've processed here. You can see that there's celery in there, carrots, um, this little white stuff is chayote. 
um, the little um, golden beads. So I basically um, put all of this stuff um, into a pot, um, put some avocado oil, and I'm gonna spread it out over this um, sheet here. Now these are, aren't all going into the same thing. I'm gonna separate them because I know certain things are gonna go certain places. Half of the celery in this pot is going to be for the mako marinara, and the other half is going to be for the green sauce. So the celery and the green sauce goes in both raw and roasted. And then over here, I've got my three beets. I have another little pan that I'm gonna do the beets separately because I don't want them to bleed over the other vegetables. I'm going to chop these two up and just put them straight onto the pan with some oil. But this one, I'm going to wrap in foil and it's gonna roast longer. So I'm gonna be getting some really depth of flavor by roasting the beets in two different ways. I'll show you that in just a minute. I also include fennel in this recipe. So this was some frozen fennel that I had that I'm gonna use. Normally I use fresh, but because I had that leftover, I don't want it to go to waste. So I'll check with you guys in just a moment. Okay, so this is the final chicken before the stuff goes in the oven. I've added the frozen fennel. I've separated the celery and the chayote for the green sauce. The other celery and vegetables are over here. All of this surface area is gonna be flavor for these little matchstick pieces of beet. And then this is the one that's gonna get like buttery roasted. So all of this is going in at 350 for at least 20 minutes, maybe more, I'll check on it. All right, so here's a little bit of an update. The timer just went off. That was for the 20 minutes of roasting time for the stuff in the oven. And just looking at it, I'm thinking I want 10 more minutes on that. I've got some mushrooms cooking over here. The mushrooms are going to be split between three of the four sauces that I'm making. There's lots of moisture in there and that's good. I'm going to cook that moisture down and that's how I'll know when it's ready when all of that moisture has cooked down. So all I did was put these um, in the pot with some salt, a little bit of oil and a tablespoon of water. The mushrooms themselves had liquid, so um, that's what you see cooking out. Now, here I've got my blueberries. They're on the heat. We'll bring them up. Same thing with my strawberries. And so um, that's the first part of making those two sauces. I've got my celery and chayote sitting to the side waiting for the green sauce. Still got the cilantro just kind of sitting and waiting. And um, I thought of one more sauce I might make, but I'm not gonna say it just yet. As you can see, I have a lot of strawberries left over. These are great for snacking, but I have another idea for them. So we'll see what happens. So here's another quick update. Both of the barbecue sauce and the ketchup are almost done. And I've added the mushrooms to them, the cilantro, all of the different spices from the recipe. Of course, I didn't show all that. But I'm just now starting on the marinara sauce. So the mushrooms, some olives, some homemade stock I've added to the pot. I'm going to start adding the roasted vegetables from here into that pot. And chicken with butter. Beets. These are going to go directly into the pot. 
with that, this guy, I'm going to open it up. Um, it's hard to do with one hand. making the um, green sauce. This is a modified version. I usually use um, lime, but for today I'm trying it just with um, red wine vinegar. Um, I do this sometimes just to test things out. Like I said, I already have some that's made. So, I mean, I'm not gonna be without it, but I wanted to see how it does with this. Um, so I'll have basically two versions, but the one with lime is my standard, but everything else should be the same. So I've got my food processor, and I'm going to start with the raw ingredients. So this is half a uh, chayote, and this is um, two celery ribs that have been cleaned. All of the stuff has been cleaned, um, so these are just going to go in raw. Celery and chayote going in raw. Also going in raw is going to be a bunch of cilantro. Bunch of cilantro. Um, as much or as little as you like. If you don't like cilantro, cilantro at all, you can try this recipe with um, parsley. Um, I have put a little bit of parsley in here before, but the predominant flavor is the cilantro. So it's probably going to be a little bit different for you if you're doing, if you're going that route. So, okay, let's get some more ingredients. All right, so here is the roasted celery and chayote. Um, so I'm just gonna add that. before but this is hing um i always activate it before i use it you can use it um you don't have to activate it if you're cooking it i just do but because this is a raw sauce um i'm going to activate it first so i'm going to use one teaspoon of this and i'm going to put it in the microwave 30 second increments until it starts to brown just slightly, becomes aromatic. So three or four times, we'll just see how that goes. All right, so I'm back and I'm gonna be adding in my activating. So like I said, I always activate it regardless. If you're cooking with it, you don't have to activate it, but this is a raw sauce, so it needs to be activated before you add it to it. Okay. So now let's go ahead and start with, um, so normally, like I said, I would be using a whole lime. So for today, I'm gonna try something different. I'm gonna use a fourth cup of red wine vinegar. And this is just me testing out some other options. The lime, I'm very sensitive to citrus. It tastes amazing. But if I can get something comparable using something else, I will do that from time to time. So um, the lime version will always be my standard, but it's good to try out other things. So before I add more spices to this, because there are more spices, I'm going to start by just kind of mixing this up. The celery and chayote have a lot of their own liquids, so that's going to help add some liquid to it just by that by itself.
pretty good. Smells pretty good. And now I'm going to add some of the other um, slices to it. black pepper that seems like a lot but again this is not something that I'm going to be sitting down eating in one setting it's going to be spread out so I am going to um, go ahead and do that now of black pepper. I'm just going to do about half a teaspoon of salt. I'm, not there. I'm going to add half a teaspoon of turmeric. Turmeric has so many wonderful benefits to it. It's great for inflammation and actually um, black pepper helps you process turmeric better so they go really well together. So this already has the, the fresh cilantro in it, but I also like to add a little bit of dried cilantro. Again, if you don't like cilantro, you can add parsley, but it just, again, gives it kind of another um, layer of flavor. And I just eyeball that since there's already cilantro in it. I'm gonna be adding um, oregano and coriander, about half a teaspoon each. One of these is already open, but it's not. I think, oh no, these are, they're both haven't been opened yet. I just got these. So I'm gonna get my half a teaspoon of oregano. I just recently stopped my spice cabinet. And then my half teaspoon of coriander as well. adjusted to your liking of course all right another really big important ingredient besides the black pepper is the cumin so I'm going to do about half a tablespoon of cumin so I'm going to get out my whole tablespoon and just get about half of it I want to have a lot of that cumin flavor, but I don't want it to be too overpowering. So I'm going to do about half a tablespoon. Let's see, is there anything I'm missing? So I'm going to mix this a little bit. water I don't usually do that but I think it depends on like the density of like the vegetables and stuff um, there's usually a little bit more liquid in here I don't want to dilute the flavor so it's just like I said an eighth of a cup of water and I'm actually gonna post this on low for a Once more 
more in it should be done. Smells amazing. I really think subbing out the lime for red wine vinegar will work. Um, I'm sure it'll be exactly the same, but at least I'll know that I have that option if I need it. separate this into some new containers and I'll be back later okay quick update so um, I made two and a half jars of the green sauce or was it three either two or three and a half so these are gonna sit in the refrigerator overnight and then I will freeze them until I'm ready to use them like I said I already have one that's open in the refrigerator so um, these will sit overnight so they can marinate in their own juices and then they'll be frozen I didn't show this one because I wasn't sure if I had enough ingredients for it. So um, next time I do have the ingredients, I'll actually show this one. But this is my red salsa and it's made from strawberry, cilantro, and um, celery. So two jars of this also going to sit in the refrigerator overnight and then it will be frozen. One of them will be frozen because um, I need one. So now I am going to start working on the just blending up the um, barbecue sauce and the ketchup. So you put these away and I'll do that. I'm just breaking down the cooked blueberries, the mushrooms, the other spices and things that I put in there. I'm gonna try to get it pretty homogenous. Um, so this will take a couple of minutes. Um, I will come back and check on you. Don't know if I've ever showed you guys how I get stuff into jars, but I have these little half pint and I have um, big ones. This is what the marinara sauce will go in but the lids are the same for each of them. And I have this little thing that I use here. So after using my immersion blender, I'm gonna use the ladle to get as much of that into that jar as possible. And I should have enough to fill two of these half, half pipe jars. Uh, I might have some left over, but that's the plan. So, and I made more than I usually do. So actually, I think I made double what I normally make so I should have enough to fill more of these jars. So let me grab a couple more and I'll be back. Alright so I jumped ahead again and so I went ahead and filled my three jars of my mock marinara sauce. Um, again these will go in the refrigerator overnight and then they will be frozen until I am ready to have them. So these are great for a traditional like spaghetti sauce or whatever sauce you're going to use i have another version that i make um it's really similar but different enough it's a lot thicker i use it as a dipping sauce but this is the one that's meant to be for like a pasta sauce so um here's the pot these are the other items here you can see them that are all going into the refrigerator overnight and then they will be frozen 
Um, so let's just review, let's count it down. I made mock marinara sauce today. I made barbecue sauce. I made ketchup. I made my green sauce. And I actually had enough to make my red salsa as well. So I made five sauces today. Um, and I'm just, this is me preparing for the summer. It's a lot easier to just have these things made. So if I decide, you know, I want to eat something, you know, grilled or whatever, I've got a sauce for it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so that was me, um, being shook a little bit by Margie, <laughs> but, um, so that was it. That was me showing you guys what it's like for me to um, make sauces. And so this is just one component of, like I said, what has become my new reality. And so I um, will, like I said, if this isn't, you know, something that people are into, I totally get. So it's not, it's not the end of the world for me. But um, I don't know, I, I, I like sharing these experiences just for my own benefit. Like I said, I've come a long way. I don't cry every time I have to go into my kitchen now because for a while there I was because I felt like there was nothing for me in there. I couldn't eat anything and now I can. Um, it's a lot of work, um, you know, but I it's, it's the choice that I've made. You know, I, I do have an alternative, but I don't like the alternative. The alternative is me... Um, having to take medication for the rest of my life. It's me eating things that while they won't make me sick, they don't provide the nourishment that I need. And so it's basically would be me being in this perpetual state of almost like malnourishment. Like I don't, why would I do that to myself? I'm, I, I, um, but anyway, that's neither here nor there. I just wanted to kind of show you, this is, you know, me um, in my kitchen on a sauce day. So like I said, maybe down the road, I'll do one where I'll do like a, a meal prep day. I'll do a day where I'm just making snacks or I'll do a day where you get to see me making my different stocks and broths, you know, who knows? I don't know. I'm not going to make any promises right now because you guys might see this video and be like, toy, don't nobody want to see that. And that's fine. But <laughs> <laughs> if you do, um, I'm happy to share it with you. And like I said, I'm sorry that there aren't any like recipes to go along with this video. If that is something that people are interested in, I'd be more than happy to share those recipes. It's just that I was holding on to them for a long time because of the book and the, I don't know if the book will ever see the light of day. Um, so anyway, um, I hope you guys are staying safe um, living in your blessings. Uh, if you're not, I'm gonna, you know, pray for you, pray for me, um, or send me good vibes. Um, life is not easy, but it is precious. And so, um, I am still technically on my hiatus. I don't know when you guys will see me again, but I'm here. Um, and, um, I care about you. And so hope you're okay. Until next time, guys, stay safe, be blessed. <laughs> hey, if you like what you see, subscribe to the channel. Give it a like and also leave me a comment. I would love that. Okay, bye.